to a two-point game, had a shot to tie it, and got beat by Kansas fairly easily back on Wednesday this week. What did they learn about themselves in the last seven well, days? Well, I think that they can compete with anybody, right? To, to have that confidence that you know you had an opportunity to beat fourth-ranked Kansas State on their home floor last Saturday and lose by just two, but they're going to have to take care of the ball in this one against a prolific defensive team, West Virginia, number one in the nation in steals per game and also number one in turnover margin. What they do is pressure you the entire game and want to force you to speed up. Well, when you think of Quinterly, Harrison, Fields, and Watson, they rank one through four in the Big 12 in that steals category. And the Cougars turn it over on their opening possession. Mark Kellogg's hand. These five are undersized about every position. But they make up for it with speed. And Harrison, Quinterly, Fields, Watson, and Blackston should be assigned to deal with Lauren Gustin. And the first... Smiley will be crucial in this one to really keep in check Quinterly and Harrison as we take a look at the BYU starters. Rose Bubakar making her first start of the season today. And a steal. Out ahead. An easy two. And West Virginia is on the board as Lauren Fields. A fifth year. Got a shoddy Oklahoma. She went to Arizona State and Oklahoma. And that and Oklahoma State, they got a lot of experience. And another steal for BYU. Boy, this is going to be a long day if they're going to continue to turn over the ball. Three already for Three BYU. Already. Yep. Average 17 coming in. All but one game this season. West Virginia has forced at least 20 turnovers and they are great at executing off of those turnovers. Their defense fuels their offense. That's Kyle Watson and now another turnover for BYU. You can see the nerves here in the beginning, right? You can see these nerves coming. Four to nothing. Four turnovers for BYU in their first four possessions. Deep three, and that one rings true for Quinterly. 34% on the season out there, and 7 to nothing. Now look what West Virginia does defensively. Whiting for three. A big one for the freshman. On the drive, well defended by Whiting. Takes a little pressure off, too, in uh, two of their last five wins in the Big 12. Houston and Cincinnati were shut out in the first quarter by West Virginia. Smiler on the drive, up and in. Five unanswered for BYU as Kaylee Smiler, a senior out of Hamilton, New Zealand, gets on the board. And she's an offensive X factor for me in this game. Her and Emma Calvert have to help carry some of the offensive load and really just balance it out in scoring for this BYU team. Didn't score in the Kansas game. Attempted just one three-point shot for a 57% three-point shooter. We'll watch what Smiler contributes today. Posting up on Whiting. So they're not many close games. That's priority number one, to keep it close. As, uh, and this is a team that was picked preseason eight. So I think Coach Kellogg even has been pleasantly surprised how well it's come together. Three from the left side, and that one's good. That's the transition we're talking about, right? West Virginia is best in transition. Being able to get out and be able to get open shots like that is key. Steal and a layup from Quinterly. And uh, Kaylee Wilson really struggling under this pressure. She's got the ball right here, and that's the 200th steal for J.J. Quinterly. Moves her to 12th all-time at West Virginia. You can see Coach Kellogg now really getting intense. He's like, hey, this is our time to get out there. Let's keep pushing the pace. We don't want them to get comfortable. And uh, Wilson's going to go to the bench and just try to settle down. Well, I thought Stop BYU going. did a really good job. They took a timeout after they were really struggling, right? Four straight turnovers to open the game. They responded well, taking care of the ball, hit a couple shots. But yeah. as you mentioned, now this is where West Virginia, they continue to force those turnovers. They wear you down over the long haul. Fields on the miss. Bubakar with the rebound. 7-0 run for the Mountaineers. See BYU tries to get it down low to Gustin. Yeah, you see there, there's a high-low look, right? Rose comes to the middle of the floor. Gustin ducks in. Baseline drive all the way in. Forced up by Harrison, but put back up and in by Watson. 16-7. They're so quick to the basketball, right? Whether it's on defense for steals or for offensive rebounds, they're quick to the basketball. Down the floor, Bubakar with the assist. Back-to-back -back bucket, buckets for Gustin. If they can just survive the initial pressure and get into a Gustin-driven offense, that seems to be the key for the Cougars today. Yeah, they, they're going to have to have those inside touches, whether it's Gustin, whether it's off the balance, attacking, penetrating into the paint. But BYU, if they can take care of the basketball, it gives them an opportunity. Blackston picked up by Bubakar. 
Turn around from the free throw line. Offensive foul. Yeah, they're going a little more size here. So let's see what they what they counter with. They're trying to maybe get the ball in, inside a little bit more, counteract it. But you know you can't let that happen as a, as a Cougar. Wide open underneath for Diggs, transfer from TCU. BYU in this game, the one advantage they truly have is on the boards with that size. But we're neck and neck, four rebounds apiece. Calvert leaves it short. Diggs on the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. Even on that last pass, she threw it low. Get it up high to her. Let her finish a little bit higher up over the rim. Uh, get it above these ladies because these girls can get out there, and they're good with their hands, and it just disrupts the shot. Another nice pass. Shot at point blank range for Diggs. Two layups in a set. Now, Wollston had 26 earlier in the week against Kansas. He's going to get a shot off here. Here comes the first one of the day and fouled on the three-point shot. Now that's her first personal, right? And you yeah. got to do whatever you can to get some of these players in foul trouble. And yes. Unfortunate to see her hurt, but an opportunity for BYU to take advantage with her on the bench. Wilston, 83% free throw shooter on the season out of Highland, Utah. Leads the Big 12 in three-point percentage at 465 and. I'm not sure about that. I, know, acting yeah. job. I think she took an acting job over there at Lone Peak. She must have. She must have. That. You take them when you can get them, yeah, right? Absolutely. Especially when you can get to the free throw line. If she can get into a rhythm, that's one thing that they're very, very uh, um, they're cognizant from the West Virginia side because they know that she can fill it up. Teams that, that pressed during, the, during my day. And the biggest thing is that you have to make sure that once you get down the floor, you don't always have to get past your guy to get to get to the basket right like it's important to be able to get into your offense and be able to slow the pace down against a team like this first bucket for Hemingway that's the third straight bucket right at the rim for the Mountaineers and they've done a really good job getting the paint a 14 to 6 advantage points in the paint for West Virginia Whiting Calvert wow. swatted out of bounds by Watson great defense there I mean just as active around the rim and a big time block Defensive play from Watson. Calvert up for three. That's a great shot. I mean, they need to be aggressive and shoot the basketball. When they are open, they need to shoot the basketball because that's where they do. Uh, they can get back into this game. So it's important that they take, take those shots with confidence. Final seconds of the quarter. Kick to the corner, and it'll be too late. So it's a BYU-West Virginia kind of week. <laughs> it absolutely is. That was a, a, a great match, too. Uh, the gymnastics meet. I know uh, the gymnastics coach, and I know that he was excited about that one. <laughs> West Virginia, 69% from the field. A lot of those layups here in the opening quarter as we begin number two. If you're Coach Whiting to put up 14 points in that first quarter and have eight turnovers, you're okay. I mean, it, it's a 10-point game right now, but they, this is a team that's held two teams in the Big 12 scoreless in the first quarter. Diggs working on Gustin. Throws it up and gets it to go down. We have not seen uh, J.J. Quinterly well, she come has back not into come the back game. Out. No, she has not yet. That's a big development all around the Big 12. Good ball movement. Wolston from the corner. She has a great touchdown there, so getting her the basketball. It looks like they're going to go to it again. Babbing with Gustin off the side of the backboard. And the Cougars bring it out. How about Wilson? The help side defense in the right spot at the right time that time, but coming away with a big block. Every now and then, Big 12 basketball looks a lot like football, but with a round ball. There's <laughs> Gustin off the glass. It is. <laughs> you know, sometimes down the floor, it's a shot miss. Abu, six foot four junior out of Germany, so it's more size for West Virginia. Coach Whiting talked about that, the physicality, too. She said that she had her practice players really be very, very physical this week to be able to go out there. Whistles from the officials to really frustrate you, even though you may not get the call every single time. And Smiler needs to be that toughness as well. Smiler with three points. This to get BYU within five, as close as they've been in a while, with 7.21 to go here. Keep an eye on Quinterly. Went out holding that wrist. She's all big 12 and all everything for West Virginia. Shot clock under 10. This is Fields. On the drive and beat 
And a shot clock by two. That's Kylie Black. If you're Coach Kellogg, that's probably one of the most frustrating offensive rebounds you give up. But then BYU turns it over. It's a weird feeling when you have those two fingers taped together. I've had it several times. Um, you kind of deal with it as a basketball player, but it is her offhand. What a great shot there. Lauren Fields left wide open. Now with eight points. Fields is a player that can get hot quickly. Yeah. And she can really string together some shots. Answering back, Smiler. And here come the Mountaineers. I really Watson. like Watson's game. She can play. Three from the right side. That As one goes said. down. As you said, Kristen. Two Black, in a row. Blackstein down. 34-21, just like that. Now Wilson for three. Back we come the other way. See, now BYU is playing West Virginia's game. That's what they're doing right now. They're playing fast, right? It's really hard to not play fast. Calvert. Here's Whiting for three into the iron. Everything rushed for BYU right now, as you yep. mentioned. Like, just not playing at the pace that they want. And one of the times that rarely you see West Virginia kind of slow the ball down because we've been a track race the last couple minutes back and forth. Well, Mark Kellogg was telling us it's all about pace. That's the, whether at home or on the road. But if you can control the pace on the road, you got, you got some good things happening. Here's another rebound and put back. Watson again. Another timeout. And we talked about it just a, a few minutes ago, how hot she can get early. And if you're not finding her, she's got way too much space right now for BYU defensively. Davenport into the lane. Up for two. And they've got 16 points off BYU's turnovers. Here in the first half, open look for three, and that one's true for Blankston. She's 37% out there. She has a great-looking stroke. Wollston, open for three. Great, great play out of timeout there. Coach Kellogg is just beside himself. He turned around and stopped his feet. He was <laughs> so frustrated to leave the one player out of that baseline out of bounds that you don't want to leave on the perimeter. I've seen that foot stop many times as a, as a player with the, my coaches. <laughs> the timeout calls were probably the best too, yeah. right? Oh, yes, always. <laughs> you get the opponent's coach to call a timeout. That's when you hit the mark. Bubakar in the corner. Left open for three. There we go. Is her second of the game for a player who comes in averaging 17%. I like the aggression, though. Here's Fields. Nice Strong drive. to the rim. It's not just a shooter. She can get to the basket as well if she needs to. This is Davenport. Needs some help. Look at that pressure. Avoid the five-second turnover. They turn it over anyway. That's what it feels like when you're left for dead. <laughs> That's what happened. You're on an island. Final yeah. seconds. Fields has had the hot hand all half. A runner with one hand. And that is how it will come to a close. Had 109 more turnovers than their opponents. And West Virginia with 186 fewer than their opponents. And that's been a big difference uh, so far in the, in the game today. With 16 points off of turnovers for West Virginia. None for BYU. And the Mountaineers with possession. We start the third. Watson. Here's Fields, working on 13 points. Now Blackston for three, and Whiting the rebound for BYU. Same starters for each team that we opened up with. And what has BYU got to do to get Gustin more involved? Well, part of it is the passes inside. They're getting so much pressure on the perimeter, right? And so just being strong with the basketball. They were trying to get high lows, right? And they were successful at a couple times. That if they can get back to that, that's something that could, they can create some havoc for. There's a duck in right there. Off the glass and in for Gustin. Not quite a high low, but nope. to your point, like they were higher up than just on the wing, and it creates more space for her to work and just be yeah. that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. You're, you're uh, exactly. It's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity when that happens. You can't bring help, and if you do, you know where it's coming from, and you can shoot it out. There's their three-point shooters. Fields saw the opening, took it right in for 15. Another great take by her. She could just tell she's playing with ultra confidence right now, right? She's got 15 points. She's seen some layups go in. She's seen some three-pointers go in. She's just playing great ball. And coming off 15, she had against Central Florida earlier in the week, and I just love her game. And as you mentioned, that confidence that she can score at every single level, and there's an easy look. That's probably the easiest look Lauren Gustin has gotten in this game. Yep. Winter league. Late whistle. Excellent. 
free throw shooter at 83%. Her goal is to be the all-time steals leader. You'd think a player's goal would be, I want the most points. I want the most that was my goal, hard too. Work goal. <laughs> that was my goal, too, right? I wanted like you always... did have the most points. <laughs> you just had a lot of buckets drop along with yeah. those steals, right? You know, yeah, that was... That was Jackson Emery's goal. Jeremy, to your credit, though, you are still number five all time at BYU. Bodies hit the floor, Calvert on the miss, and she's down on the floor. They had a guy, our lady, that cut through the, the middle of the floor. They got it to her, set a screen, ball screen. You can't defend that a lot of times when you're in pressure and you're in scramble mode. So it was a great job. Calvert gets the first to go. Coming off the bench today for the first time in a long time. Hmm. What remember Whiting saying, hey, we're losing too much. Why not use now to mix things up? Really, I think that's coming with the indecisiveness on their shots. When they have a, a little bit of an opening, they're not taking it in time. Forced up, down low, knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to BYU. Be able to play foul-free basketball. More full-court pressure. The Cougars have found a way to break it here in the second half. Davenport for three. Quinley's fast hands wins an extra possession. Now for three. Good hustle there by JJ to be able to get that ball back and created two good shots for herself. She was not able to make them, but you know that's great play by her. Calvert Cullen, it's Gustin Cullen for the ball, but it's slapped away. And here comes Fields. Nice shot. <laughs> 17 for field. How'd that even shot, go right? in? That is a very tough shot. When you have confidence, though, you're feeling it. Davenport enters right back. Wow. Finally. That got sped up. They, they wasted no time to get that shot. Harrison being harassed by Whiting. Takes it in. On the rebound is Calvert. Here's Davenport. Yeah, Davenport, six points in this third quarter has really led the charge offensively for BYU. Smiler for three. Great ATO there. The, it closed the door, right? There you go. Came out kind of like an America's type play. It went through the gate, closed it, got a wide open three. Great call by Coach Whiting out of a timeout. Big bucket for Smiler, who's a streaky three point shooter. And when she's hitting, she's hitting 57%. A down low to answer is Watson. Wide open there, wide open, just a miscommunication there by BYU, but that was a great find. Uh, settling down the crowd, that was getting a little rowdy here soon. Calvert want the ball down low, swing it the other way. Davenport for three is an air ball, kept alive by Wolston, took Austin off the glass. Trying to shake Smiler, nowhere to go. Quinterly for three. Davenport's got it. It's good defense. You can see that they closed out a little bit short to J.J. They know that her three-point shot is not her favorite shot. So they closed out a little bit short so that she didn't drive by and get an easy bucket, and she ended up missing the shot. Gustin with a good look down low. That's what she's great at. That's why they were closing out short a little bit. Now she goes by him and he gets an easy bucket. You see that hesitation just slightly right in that quick yep. first step. She's very explosive, shifty and quick. 13 very, very shifty. For Quinterly. Good pass. The high-low right there. Calvert for two. And Calvert has seven. Back to a five-point game. It's a big part of what BYU does on their offensive set is look for that high-low. They have an advantage with Calvert and Gustin inside. This is the BYU team that took Kansas State to the wire a week ago. It's taken them a while, but they appear to be in gear. And there's a foul down low. Well, Smiler does a good job on the block, and Smiler's sixth in the conference of blocks per game, but they got Wolston on the foul. She came in to help. Smiler's out. Whiting is in. And Hemingway, first player in program history to wear number zero. Transfer from Mississippi State. I should say wearing double zero. Yep. I want BYU to do a better job of getting closer to the three-point line because there they had two open shots if they were closer, but they didn't feel comfortable shooting it because they were out too far. Whiting gets a trip to the free-throw line. On the flip side, the Mountaineers just three for four. And the Mountaineers come in. This is a team that gets to the free-throw line. They average right around 20 attempts per game. So BYU's done a really good job staying in front and not fouling. That foul on Abreu Bagbu, her third. And you 
If you look at Whiting, leads the team in steals and assists, averaging double figures, just over 10, 63% from the free throw line. And, and Jimmer, this is a freshman education. As many points as you scored, you didn't have to do it till you were a sophomore for the most part. Final minute of the third. Driving to the basket is Fields. That goes to what Mark Pope does with the men's basketball team for BYU. And when they shoot free throws in practice, it is dead silent. They don't want anyone talking. You can hear a pin drop. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm always surprised by that because it should be loud when you're uh, yeah. shooting a free throw, exactly. right? Exactly. You're just nor- it's, you're used to it as a player. So and Harrison's still making an impact defensively, but she has yet to score a point in this game. She's the second leading scorer on this team and just 0 for 5. Gustin travels. West Virginia going to settle for the last shot. Fields has had the hot hand. This is Harrison. Going to have to go up with it over Whiting. Tapped out to Fields. Yeah. This will count. It and is. it goes. That's a huge shot. Huge shot. What a shot by Lauren Fields. Do that, but now it's over with. So we got to we move team. forward. We got to go forward and make sure that we're, you know, playing uh, aggressive in this fourth quarter. I mean, they had a great third quarter except for that last little shot right there. So it's important for them to just keep the confidence up and continue to play great basketball. Calvert up top to Smiler. Here's Whiting. Baseline drive. Wolston. Good hand. Stolen by Whiting. Now she waits for some help. She has good length. Uh, I I would like to see her do that a little bit more. Get that crossover. Well, Smiler's got to take that shot. I thought she had a wide open look and unselfish to make the extra pass but they need her to shoot Gustin four points out of the break for BYU and it's 58-54 BYU at defense fueling their offense and that's what coach Whiting had told us she said our best offense is going to be our stop and score getting a stop defensively and leading it into a break West Virginia now figuring out how they're going to play in the half court that that's something that's Definitely not what they want, although Jordan just had a great move right there. Beat that him. one bit from the pressure they're feeling in this game. Quinterly. Now Gustin driving baseline. Kick back. Calvert for three. Beats the shot clock. What a pass. Knocks it down. And that should be over and back, but they're going to say it was off of Smiler and not Harrison. So we play on. Quinterly. Free throws good. The 5'8 junior out of Norfolk, Virginia. Gets them both. Back to six for the Mountaineers. Those first five minutes of the game, it was that BYU was just stunned by the pressure. And here's his steal as Harrison takes it right away from Wilson. It's a big play right there. This is a huge time for BYU. With uh, with Amari not in the game, who's going to handle the pressure? How they're going to get their shots off? They're probably going to try to go to Lauren. Um, There's another bad pass and, by Wilson, and out of bounds. That's 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 the key right now. How are they going to handle that pressure without Amari in the game? Yeah, how long do you leave her on the bench as you watch Harrison? It's just the feistiness and gets her hands on the ball. When you go to cross it, that's when they pinch in and dig in with their hands, and they're very smart to locate the ball. We've seen that from. Quinter Lee as well as Harrison, how good they are. Those are the top two in the league in steals per game. Davenport from the baseline. He's been playing big in the second half. It's great. Awesome to see. Ten points for Davenport. Average is six. BYU is a team now, 21 turnovers. Deep Huge three. shot. Beautiful shot by Harrison. Team from Harrison on that crossover and just leading to more opportunities for BYU. Nelson, you're fine, Gustin. Forces it up, and it's blocked, but into the hands of Calvert. Yeah, hurry up now. Get out. now it's Smiler. BYU is a team plus 10 on the rebound margin in this game. Calvert with the left hand, and out it goes. She'll go to the line and shoot two. And she got, didn't score and three rebounds, but did enough down low to just make life difficult for Calvert and for Gustin. She did her job. She came in and did exactly what she was supposed to do. And when you're getting a different look from her, because it's very different than what you're seeing from these other players that are undersized going against Gustin. I mean, Aragbu just brings the, the pressure and the physicality in there that's constant. 
This plays right into your hands. A seven-point lead with a minute to go. They tried to do a little West Virginia right there in, in double team, but, you know, they practice against that every single day, and this is something that they're very good at. They're skilling it, <laughs> you know, and, and you got to follow. And that's one thing that is the coach, they teach you. You're going to take a charge, yep. and you're going to want some of those calls. But at 80% from the free throw line, she is money. Back here in Provo, it's 70, 73 to 64 for the Mountaineers. And here's Wolston for three. Tapped out by Gustin. That gives Gustin another double-double, but stolen away. 23rd turnover of the game. 24, 28 to 4 in points off of turnovers for the Mountaineers. That's what they do. That's why they're in the top 25. They'll go to 8 and 2 in the Big 12. BYU to 2 and 8. And as we've come to know, Amber Whiting, no one likes to lose. And no one hates losing more than she does. Right? They're just, they know how to win. They know how to play. They've been through the battles. They're tricky. They're able to get under your skin, right? They're just great basketball players, and that's the, the confidence that coach has in them. You watch the cross. They're almost coming up with another one. Whiting missed. Smiler out to Calvert. Now gets it back. And that window of opportunity is so slim. If you can't get yeah. the pass in there timing-wise, but a great look from Calvert to Gustin. Gustin with 16. Relentless pressure right till the very end. BYU at the edge, but hasn't been a decisive factor, right? Yeah. Turnover margin. We've been talking about that for some time. And that's really favored West Virginia. Especially in those points off of turnovers. That's the key. That's the key is the points off of turnovers. And then he was worried about BYU at the three-point line. Well, the Cougars 10 for 21 from three. And I think that's what kept them in the ball game. Right? Yeah. It Absolutely. really did. I mean, it kept them in the ball game so that they could be where they are at right now. But West Virginia is just a little too good tonight. Davenport Ooh. for another three. 15 seconds. 74 to 69. Yeah, not, not quite there in a, a couple categories that they've continued to struggle with, one of those being the turnovers. Here's Harrison fouled by Davenport with 13.4. I want them to play as hard as they can and not worry about the altitude and play the game that they need to play. Harrison gets the first. I like what he said, uh, you know, this, it's going to be something different from what BYU's face. Meaning what, what he's going to bring in. Is that not many teams play the way we do. Yeah, this is definitely the def the, the hardest team they've played in terms of pressure. And yeah. bringing that pressure the entire game. Even here in these final seconds, nothing open for three. So Gustin offers a two. And time's going to run out. And West Virginia comes to Provo and beats the Cougars 76.